Hello and welcome to another of my videos uh, about techniques using the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil. So in some of my earlier videos I've been looking at things like, um, excuse me, I've stacked my samples in the wrong order. So I've been looking at foiling the edges of tags and toppers. Um, I haven't cut these out because I want to do it while I'm videoing for you um, and you know making a, a topper um, and this looks a bit shabby at the moment it's not been cut out yet okay but we're going to come to that but the the earlier videos I've made I've used a thin metal shim um, to actually go underneath the back of my die so that something firm for the die to press on um, but I've had some feedback um, from people saying they can't actually get a thin metal shim they seem to be out of stock everywhere uh, and I've said oh try here and they've gone yeah yeah they're, they're out of stock as well um, so I thought I'd do some experimenting see if I can find an alternative method now I don't know if it will work as well and I've not done a lot of experimenting um, but so far so good so I thought I'd have a look at making things like Thomas with a forward edge uh, just and tags. I mean, if you got something like that, you well, you can use it just as the frame if you if you want to and and, and have it inside your your die cut or just on your backing paper, um, just to frame your sentiment. Um, and then you you could stamp your sentiment in there, um, heat emboss it if you want to. Um, so certainly. I don't know if people realise this, but if, if you you know you heat emboss, it's not going to ruin your foiling. Your foiling's absolutely fine, so you can do that. So I've, I've done a few of these, and as I say, I've been experimenting with a new method. Um, not only doing tags and toppers, but foiling with the backs of dies, um, and that seems to work quite happily also. And I've I've got some ideas on that, but let's get started. And then that's while I'm waiting for things to fall to warm up um, we can have a look in, in at some of the samples and do some of the die cutting and, and see how we'd actually use things okay so what I thought was okay I need something underneath the back of the die to support it because when I first got my go press I tried foiling with the back of the die just straight onto the the non-stick mat and I found I got lots of over foiling around the edges it looked quite shabby so I knew I needed something underneath and I had a thin metal shim so that's what I tried um, but as I say people are telling me they can't get a thin metal shim so I thought oh, get my bits and pieces here it's my second video of the day so I'm a bit disorganized okay so I thought well from an earlier experiment, I've got a piece of adorable scorable I tried foiling on um, and I hadn't got the pressure right. So I've got a, a piece of waste card there. So I thought, well, that's quite stiff. Maybe that would work underneath. So I did that and actually that did work quite well. So um, that's something you might want to try. Just using one layer of that. That was adorable scorable But then I thought, well, People haven't necessarily got a doable scorable, and I don't know how long your bits of card will last underneath because obviously they're getting pushed about and they, they might get mushed. Um, you might start finding your, your quality of your foiling deteriorates. So I thought, okay, maybe if I just put a normal piece of card, um, and I did that, and somewhere here I've got the result. And that's when I got, if I just put one piece of card underneath, this was the result and it hasn't foiled properly around all these edges. I don't know if the camera's picking that up very well. There we go, you can see that there's missing foil just in this edge there. There we are. So now I thought, okay, so I'll use two bits of card and see how that does. So there's my two bits of card and they'll need to heat up. And then we'll try foiling. So I've got, um, let me see, I've got some foil here. Do this in this 
nice. And that is that big enough. Oh, I hate wasting bits of foil. I think, yeah, I think that'll be big enough. Okay, so let me put that to one side and get my foil cut to size. And you may notice I end up with all bits of tape around my mat because I, I use them to stick a piece of card down and then I keep them and I reuse them for the next bit. So, where will this fit? Will that fit? Mm. Yeah, kind of there. So I've got here a normal cutting die. It happens to be a Kitu Creations one. So it's in black. And the cutting edge has got is away from the supporting edge of the back of the die. So that's the back of the die. Okay, and then the front of the die, if you can see the cutting edge, try and get the right camera angle so you can see it. Focus on it. I think it's focusing on my fingers instead. Let me put a piece of card behind it, maybe. Maybe that'll help the camera to focus. Oh, that's better. Right, so you can see it's cutting edge on the outside here, and then you've got the, the supporting rim of the of the die comes in from that. So that's going to give us foiling. Okay, if we use the die use the back of the die and then we're going to cut it out okay so let's get this foil cut to size I need, just, I need it just a little bit over because i need to be able to tape it down yeah if i take that bit I'm going to cut across there and dip that corner off the top Lay that on my car and oh, yeah, get rid of that corner as well. So if you're going to try this technique, start small. Yeah, start with let's say some it's a small tag. Um because as you as you try bigger dies it gets harder to get good good consistent results. Um And make sure before you try things like this, try your foil and your card with a hot foil stamp. Because uh, if it doesn't work with a hot foil stamp, it's not going to work with anything else. And that's the easiest thing to sort out your, you know, the pressure and the feel of your, your die cutting machine when the pressure's right. I'm just going to snip that. No, I use the small scissors. Snip that off there. Okay, so I've got my cutting edge pointing upwards okay so i can feel that now you never ever want to put your cutting edge down facing your non-slip mat always with the cutting edge up so let's get this back so my two pieces of card's been getting nice and warm and then i'm going to put this on top there okay with the cutting edge up and i'm going to add one shim of card that piece will do okay one shim on top i close the lid and i'm going to need some time for that all to heat through because i need the piece of card that i've put my foil on to get warm okay while we're waiting let me actually cut some of this out now you never get to see me die cutting because my big die cutting machine is uh, it's actually a Toddo. Um, now you might think that's a bit strange, having a Toddo and a GoPress. Um, but actually, I loved foiling on my Toddo, and I loved it so much, I got really frustrated about having to wait for it to cool down so that I could die cut, because I've just got the one big machine. Um, so that's why I got my GoPress, was because I liked foiling on the Toddo so much kind of makes sense um but then i found the go press is is a lot easier to use um so i have my toddo out my go press out it barely gets put away i i use it on nearly every card i make so now so let's take one of these and the die that i use to to foil it so you can see this die let's put a piece of card behind it again that seems to help the camera Okay, so the die, it's, its cutting edge is in the middle of the supporting frame. Okay, 
So I've folded the back and then I'm going to place it on top. And tape it down in a couple of places. And it's worth, it's worth, when you've taped it down and you pick it up, Sometimes I look and I, well, I see it from a different angle. I think, mm, no, I've got, I've got, haven't got that straight. So I end up on taping one side and twisting it a bit. And it's worth taking some time to get it in the right place. You do really need to tape it down. Okay, I've managed to tape from the edge of the die onto the waist. So even if my tape damages my card, that won't be a problem. Okay, so using my, my little die cutting machine the right way up or you can tell because this is a test piece i'm using a scrap of card that i fold on the back of and that it was falling that the over foiled and really didn't didn't look good so i'm just reusing that card for trying out something else it doesn't have to be a new piece of card every time Ooh, what's that one there i think the card's too big I'll trim the card down because it's not going to go through my tiny little die cutting machine the camera's going to shake We won't do a lot of that, it'll make you all seasick. So, let's move that out of the way. And I shall go and do any future die cutting in the other room. Right, but, okay, so now I've cut that out. That looks really lovely foiled edge on that. Okay, and if I, as I can stamp a, a sentiment into that. Okay, so this has warmed up. So let me go and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I shall be back. Okay, so I'm back from the die cutting machine and you can see what we've got. So that's kind of sacrificial if the die digs into it. If the die doesn't dig into it, you really probably haven't got enough pressure. Okay, now I shall talk more about that in a minute. So you may get scratches on your lid. You can see mine is quite scratched. It's not a problem unless you're using this as a stamp press. And if you're using it as a stamp press, you really need to have two lids, so one to use when you're stamping and one for if you're using uh, racks of dies or the cut foil and embossed dies. Okay, and you can buy the lid separately. Okay, so there's my cardstock. That can stay there to keep warm. So you'll see on my videos, there's videos that's um, it's a sentiment of a fold edge, you know, fold sentiment and 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 the edge of the the tag, um, and you can you can use the same te technique of you 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 do your your fold sentiment with your hot fold stamp first. And then when you get to the foil in the edge bit, you just substitute this method instead of using the metal plate. So there we are. That's cut that. And then all I need to do is put the die on top and cut it out. But if I want to stamp a sentiment in that, it's actually easier to, to do that bit before you cut it out. Um, I quite often stamp and heat emboss using metallic embossing powders that looks really nice um, but it's a lot easier if you're holding stuff down with magnets or tape you've got an edge where you can put your magnet or your tape to hold it still while you're doing your stamping so that's a tip from me okay and then we can cut this out okay but I've got some others that I've already done that I'm I want to talk about the kind of foiling quality and um, and what happens so Going back to this one, okay, now everybody seems to think oh, I get perfect foiling. 
all the time and I don't and it's not that I I don't discard the things that don't come up perfectly I, I use what I can if I can so if you look in this corner here I think it's where it shows up best you can see there's, there's some foil missing in places but I think when I die cut this that's going to end up in the sort of turned down edge of the card and I don't think it's going to notice very much if at all so I thought we'd try that and then you can see whether or not I'm right I've also got yes that one that didn't quite fall properly I'm going to try die cutting that as well and then we can see whether or not you need perfect foiling because I don't think you do and I think people would get a lot less frustrated if they knew it didn't need to be perfect so let's take the dies down on these and I can take them both and die cut them and come back. So this big one, this is a tattered lace die. Um, let's put the card behind again so you can see the edge. The camera focuses better. You can see it's got its cutting edge in the middle of that frame and that makes it um, a good die for this technique. Okay, so I've earlier today I took my... Oh, buried it under here. My hot button, and I've got my foil. So this is this is the actual piece of foil I used. Okay. So what I did, uh, as I say, there's a longer video on this. What I did was I taped this piece of foil down to the card. Okay. So I taped it down before I did anything, and then I just laid this on top to make sure I I I. You know, I've got enough around the edge. And then I put my hot four stamp on and decided where the hot four stamp needed to go. So I would have, you know, you can imagine I've got tape top and bottom for the foil. And then I tape hot four stamp down to the foil. In at least two, maybe three or four places. Okay, depending on the size of your hot foil stamp. Okay, I've not taped the die down because that was just so that I could sort of have a look and make sure I got the sentiment lined up nicely within the, the bounds of the die. Okay, and then I've taken that away and that went onto the go press to foil uh, the sentiment. So you have to remember make sure you allow enough time for that hot foil stamp to warm up once you put it on the go press so don't rush too much it does take you know you need to give that 30 seconds or so okay and then once that's done take that off but leave the foil tape down and then you take the die in place cutting side up you more tape take the die down and you put that on the go press and use this technique I've just used for the, the exactly the same as I did for that for the frame around it now this is quite a big die um, so I like with die cutting when you've got sort of wide areas of cutting surface you, you might need to rotate it so it's another good reason for having it all taped down really well is you can actually um, roll it a couple of times, take it off, um, carefully turn it round, make sure that the die hasn't moved, take it back down again if necessary, put it in the other direction on the go press so you're then rolling the long edges and roll it again. Okay, so with bigger dies you, you quite often need to do that so that you actually make sure you get sort of good contact and pressure down these long edges. Okay. So that's what you do. And then when you've taken it all off, you end up with what I've got here. Okay, so don't take the foil off in the middle. Leave it there until right to the end and then you take it off and you've got that and you go, mm, oh, it's missed a bit. Will that work? No, okay, so you, you, you go with what you've got. You, you carry on and you, you just see how it's going to look. No, nobody ever seems to get a magnifying glass out and find the missing bits. We just go, oh, that's pretty. And 
that's fine. Okay, so lining my die up with that so that the edge is completely covered. And it's a good idea to kind of get over the top and check. And, uh, yeah, and just, yeah, there. Tape it down. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up and have a look. Yeah, but I'm going to put some more tape on because I think that's going to waggle around in the die cutting machine. Yeah, it's it's already I've got I've got more of an edge showing this side than that side, so I need to move that over a little bit. And it is worth taking the time to peel your tape back. Sometimes I just leave it on, attach the card still. Sorry, that was the traffic outside. Um, sometimes I leave the tape attached to the, the card still and just move the diaphragm. And then I can just push that back down. Put another piece on this side. I'm just using small pieces of tape. And now I can see this side. I need to do the same. So move this up. Just tiny little bit. There we are. There. The last piece of tape on this side. There we are. There we are. Okay, so that's that one. And then I also want to do this one. Which I have buried the die somewhere on this desk. Ah, there it is. I'll put it in a safe place. Okay, so I'm going to take my piece of tape off of there. Line this one up. I just want to see, this is the one where the foiling isn't perfect. And I just want to see when I'd actually die cut it out whether or not we can see any difference between this one and the one with the foiling was perfect. Okay. Let's take that one as well while I'm going to the die cutting machine. Now maybe I'll recap with that one in a minute. Okay. So I shall be right back. some of these bits out of the way so that's the one I die cut earlier with a perfect foiling on it okay so this is the one where some bits have been missed and you can see there's some bits missing down there so yeah maybe that's too much missing let me put it against some white card maybe that's so down in this corner, you can if you look closely see there's some foil missing. But then if I'm using this on a card, I might have flowers around the edge or something that's going to cover that up anyway. Um, you always need to know a place to put a butterfly. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to throw away your foiling just because it's not perfect. And in fact, I've got a die that cuts tiny little butterflies, it cuts three at a time, and they quite often appear on the edge of my sentiments. So, there we go. So, that one, yeah, maybe you do want it a bit better than that if you can. Let's see what about this one. Peeling my tape. Okay, there. Okay, and again, most of it where the foil was missing, that's actually outside the cut line. Um, a little bit down on this corner. But so often, you know, we, we end up with 
butterflies and flowers around the edges of this kind of thing that you know would anybody really notice and if it's on a card you know you'd have to look closely to know the foil was missing and as I say butterflies flowers you know that would, that would easily hide that so there we are so this technique seems to work certainly um, the have a look closely that one that's got the foil missing that was when I only had one piece of card underneath rather than two so definitely two layers of 250 GSM card um, seems to give enough support okay I don't think it, putting shims on top would make much difference um, but you need enough support underneath your die um, this one is for beautifully we can cut that one out as well okay um, so I might do that in a minute but other ideas for using foiling with the backs of dies because it doesn't have to be a frame die um, this works for all, all sorts of dies so I've got a selection here uh, and some ideas so you know lots of people are working on Christmas stuff at the moment so I thought I'd have a look at what I can do with some Christmassy things um, or just just general or dies and there was another one here oops with its waste foil and it's die somewhere where's the die gone ah there it is okay so you will see previously I've, I've done videos on foiling with the backs of dies and suggested that you put a die cut in now for some dies you need this and, and it seems like some you don't so sometimes it's worth trying it without and seeing what you get and if you haven't got consistent foiling in the places you'd want it put a die cut it and i've you can see i've die cut it from this pink card it's not a color that i would use much so i've kind of say, taken that as a sacrificial piece of card um and i just keep it keep it in the die cut until i want to actually use the die and then take it out put it to one side and then put it back in and then i've, I've got it there when i'm foiling now you might be thinking well you know, foiling with the back of that, it's not a very attractive pattern. It, it, I must admit, it, you know, in its own right, it's not. But let me die cut it and show you what happens. Because can you see where where there's these holes? My card. My card. Where there's holes, you don't get any foiling. Okay. So when I die cut that out. Okay, and you can only do this with symmetrical dies, and that means you can turn them round and it's the same. That's what symmetrical means. So you can't do this with sentiments, for example, because they're not the same either way round. But I can die cut that, and we'll see. I'll show you what I mean. So there's that, and then I, I've been looking at. Um, snowflakes and, and using snowflake dies now I've got a lovely set of snowflake hot foil stamps and that's great for me but I know a lot of people haven't got a set of snowflake hot foil stamps so I thought I'd see what I can do with some dies to incorporate um, not necessarily for snowflakes but um, using foiling with my die cut snowflakes so what I've done here is I've got this one okay And it, this one does happen to be a Toddo brand die. Um, so I've then done it with a different one as well. Just to prove it doesn't matter what brand it is. But um, there's no areas on this. If I foiled and then die cut, I'm just going to get a snowflake. Because it, it's just white in the middle. The cutting edges are right at the edge of that supporting metal. But what I wanted to do was see if I could create like a foiled mat behind my snowflake. Okay, and this is just on a small piece of card. You do this on a larger top or make a complete background of them. Um, so I've just stuck this down with some some sort of 
some low tack glue just so I could show you what I mean. So I thought you could have a, a foiled background and then cut a snowflake using the dye or a different dye, you know, you can mix and match. And then you, you could glue that in place. And that could be a glitter snowflake or, you know, silver or whatever you wanted. And you, you'd have the foil behind it. Um, and one of my foils is a, a holographic glitter foil. And I love using that because I hate making a mess with glitter. My husband makes me make, hates me making a mess with glitter. No matter how much I try and keep it tidy, it's, it seems to end up everywhere. And we've got a cat, and if, if the cat gets glitter in her fur, that, that's not good. So I don't use glitter often. But if I can produce a, a glitter effect, in fact, I've used it on, I used a flower dye with the glitter foil on, on the edges of those flowers. So rather, rather than actually putting glitter on them, that's foil. So that's an idea. And then, as I say, I wanted to, show that it can be done with other dyes. So uh, this is part of a die set from in the UK from a company called The Works. They they do really good value, not high end, but good value sort of art and craft stuff as well as books and things. Um, so this is part of a, a die set of three snowflakes. I think the whole die set was four pounds. So it doesn't break the bank. Um, and again, there'd be no point in sort of foiling with that and cutting it out because I'm just going to get, I might as well use foil card to cut my snowflake rather than foil it. Um, but again, I can create a foil mat behind my snowflake and stick that on top. Or you create a foil aperture. So maybe I, I could, that could be an aperture, cut as an aperture and have foil around the edges and have glitter the card behind or something like that because that would work and actually then I'd have a raw snowflake as well on that one okay so lots of ideas and then you've got things like this little bow okay this little bow die uh, came with a tonic magazine last year I think it might have been the first one one second one it had a little um like gift box as the, the free gift die with it and this was part of that die set and it's just a tiny bow and i find it's just the right size for putting it at the top of christmas baubles when i'm when i'm die cutting them so what i've done is i fold with the back of it and again the foiling's not perfect and i've used this blue foil because i had some scraps of it left um, and I'm going to die cut that and show you how that comes out so let's let's get these stuck down now uh, so and you can see I've already got my bits of tape here ready because I've taken them off what I was doing earlier so let's get that so it's covering the foiling and I do try and use more than one piece of tape piece of tape either side Seems to seems to work best. I think I've pulled that over as I've pushed the tape down. So do be careful as you're putting your tape down that you don't pull the die out of position. Sometimes I do this with a ma magnetic sheet underneath because it helps stop the die sliding around. Let's try that. There we go. Right, so that one's taped down. And this one, yeah, you're, what, you're thinking, really, that? Yeah, you wait and see. So if you imagine this, maybe a, a silver card with red foil on it, something like that. Again, because I'm experimenting, I'm not necessarily using my favourite colours of card or foil. Yeah, I'm just using what I've got available to try things out. So I'm going to go and die cut those and show you what it looks like. Bear with me. 
Hi, okay, so I'm back from my die cutting machine. So I have got, I decided to die cut the snowflake as well. So we can have a look what that's like as an aperture. So let's have a look at this bow first. Now this isn't the best card for foiling onto that I've used for this. It was just an off cut I had on the desk. So quite often I do this onto some silver card. Uh, but there. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do, I am going to get some spot glue. I actually need proper glue. I'm going to stick this down because otherwise you're not going to see it from your fingers. And I'm going to stick it just above this snowflake. Actually, just below it. Maybe just below it. That's too much glue. glue out of it there we are that'll be fine okay i'll just let that go tacky for a minute and then i'm going to stick that on there so i'll take the tape for these so I, I tend to sort of use my bits of tape during the day you, you feel when they start really losing their stickiness they they gradually get less and less sticky um, but they, they do me for, for quite a few uses. So let's just push this out. There we are. So this, I see now that it's die cut, is now in that gorgeous copper colour with those pale gold what look like berries on the end. So that completely transforms the look of that okay it's a, a look i really like and you do get little spots where the release holes are that haven't fallen but they just look like more berries you know um if you really bother put some nouveau drops on them or something like that okay but yeah so so that that's a different way of using foil foiling with the backs of dyes um to get like two tone effect okay so that's that one that was that die so it's not got anything around the edges but it is useful in that there's bits that are missed so you get some bits that are foiled and some bits that aren't okay so that was that one and when i've got my my die cut that i keep in it i'll put back in so it doesn't get lost there we are so that was that one oh, let me stick the bow down and show you There we are. Oops, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That way up. You're never quite sure which way up this should go. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But okay. So there, you can see the bow. So it's got sort of foiling around the edges. So that really accents that bow nicely. If you die cut it, 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 it got sort of embossed. It's got debossed areas embossed areas because they're raised up um, and those aren't foiled and the rest of it is so that looks really good and so again if you do it on foil card that looks really nice okay so that was that and then I, I this snowflake okay so I thought I'd die cut the snowflake so you can so we can see what it looks like as an aperture Just need to reach a pokey tool. Mm -hmm. That's not pokey tool. That's pokey tool. Push this out carefully using the release holes. So I've now got the turquoise iridescent snowflake. But as I say, I could have just die cut that from some foil card. Um, 
but then sometimes you want to make sure you've got things matching so and then I've got this lovely foiled aperture and I've just been and got some silver card so that we can check this out okay and if I put my I'm going to cut a piece I assume I'm matting and layering with this and I don't normally cut them by hand but let's do that so you can get the idea I'm going to stick this down to this piece of forward card. I'm just going to roughly do this. Obviously, you would be measuring and cutting or die cutting both pieces of card okay so that's with my silver shining through and then I could put my white snowflake on top so I am just gonna go to the top of the scrap card so I don't get glue on my mat let's put some glue in the center if I can Get this running properly. That's it. I'll put some glue on there. Usually, I'll, I'll do this with wet glue for a card. Um, if I'm sticking onto foil card or mirror card, I actually use super thick slappy top as a glue. So I just want to leave that with the edges sticking up. I have that for a, a design idea. Yeah, you do a series of those on a card. Yeah, or one in the corner of your background. I'll just do it with a nice tag. That's good. And then I've still got the snowflake to use somewhere else on the card. <laughs> yeah, so you can all coordinate and use all your bits. Okay, so lots of ideas there, um, particularly for using your normal cutting dies for getting some really cool forward effects. Okay, let me hold that in front of the camera and let it focus properly. Yeah, okay. And, and that one. The, four, the snowflakes just stuck on top and I've put the bow underneath. Okay, so lots and lots of ideas for using your normal cutting dies for foiling without needing a metal shim. Um, I haven't tried out the flower dies, but I have no reason to think they, they wouldn't work just as well. Um, particularly because it, this snowflake dies, you know, it's quite a solid die. Um, so I think it's a case of, yeah, have a look at your dies. Think about, is that a nice shape? Would that be a nice shape for a mat? If I if I had an outside edge to cut around that and mount it on, would that look good? Well, you don't need to cut it out. Just foil it. Yeah? Okay. I have talked for long enough. And if you've got any questions, do put them in the comments. I read the comments. I do answer people's questions. Um, or come and find me on Facebook. Um, I'm part of the, the Go, Go Press Foil and Everything Toddo group on Facebook, so you can find me there if you want to come and show me what you're making, ask questions about what you're making, show me photos of what's going wrong, you, you can do it in there. Um, so have a good time with your foiling. Go Press and Foil Machine is brilliant. Spellbinders Glimmer Machine is out soon, and that does something, some very similar stuff. 
I'm looking forward to seeing that. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.